Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say bring him in and see if, I mean, what's your return? Go away, Josh. Yeah, yeah. Yep, should we get started? You wanna wait for Eddie or? <laughs> you wanna text? <laughs> oh, yeah, you can text. Sorry, Eddie. Eddie. Who's there, Alan? Mm -hmm. He's hey. in the CM's office. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll give him one more minute. Started. Started. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So, yeah, I think you give them a year. Okay. Right. 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 Uh, Council Member Eddie Alvarez is absent. Uh, Council Member Jeff Krepke. Here. Chair Chris Rogers. Here. Uh, let the record reflect that Council Member, we have two present and one absent. Cool. Do we have any announcements before we get started? Do thank you, Chair Rogers. Um, good morning, Chair Rogers, Council Member Okrepke. Um, just a really quick reminder: we actually made this announcement at the full council meeting on December twelfth. Um, we have recently had some staffing changes within the department. Um, Raisa De La Rosa has left the city of Santa Rosa. Um, and to fill those shoes, we have moved Jill Scott, who is our real properties manager, um, over to the team. And Jill will be covering an acting role as a deputy director of economic development. Um, under this role, really, Jill's core responsibility will be to move forward with the strap plan, um, to really start forming up more of a business attraction retention component to the team, understanding also the need for small business support. Um, but really the important piece is getting into the implementation strategies in that strap plan, which will be the core conversation for today's meeting. Um, so with that, I'll hand it back to the chair. Congratulations. Let's see if there's any public comment on the announcement. Yes. What was the official title you have now? Deputy Director of Economic Development. There you go. <laughs> All right, we'll move to approval of the minutes. Uh, did you have any amendments to the November 14th minutes? Nope. All right, let's see if there's any public comment on them. Seeing none, uh, let's show those adopted without objection. Good. And let's go to public comment. Yes, sir. I'm here. Uh, I'll come up there in the front so you can see me better. I don't like to talk behind people's backs. That's not good. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland. I wanted to thank you all. I hope you had a good holiday and I hope you'll have a good new year. I brought a couple of flyers here that are important. <clears throat> the city has a program now to help with down payment assistance for housing within Santa Rosa. And you also have a forum coming up in two days about housing. I was hoping that you folks could actually prioritize it to be housing in the downtown specific plan area and closer to the smart station type approach. I know that this is citywide, so anyone that's trying to buy a house is gonna go for whatever they can get. But by the same token, if the city gave an incentive and said, listen, if you'll come in closer, we'll even help you get you know more benefits, I think are the terms for it, right? Um, and that's not something I'm trying personally to do, so I'm not here to advocate just for me. This is for young families, and this is for the city to have economic vitality. Having people live here in this core footprint area is what's going to get us going. With that in mind, I don't know if those of you who are here remember that the transaction that involved the former AT&T building that then went to Futrell Development was premised on the idea that housing would go into that building and that hasn't occurred yet. So I believe that you should talk to these people such as Mr. Futrell and others and see if you can get this type of a program going for condominiums in these buildings down here and do something like that, townhome approach, something that helps us here locally with the economic development within our core area. And then last but not least, <clears throat> In your documents that I was looking at today, what's up, brother? This is my man from another neighborhood. <laughs> right, Roseland's in the house, so you know I get to talk about Roseland now because a portion of Roseland is in your downtown specific plan going out on Sebastopol Road. There's an area called Roberts Avenue 
that is primed in a way to be developed in the future for housing. Um, some people come in and talk with you and say they've got ideas about what should go and how that should go. I'm not here to tell you that. I'm here to say you folks should reach out to the United States Environmental Protection Agency for grant funding for what's called community-wide planning and assessment of an area such as that. And then also reach out to other uh, entities such as the U.S. Department of Economic Development. That's what you're about. They got a federal department. And I heard tell they have billions of dollars. This is the year to get it because if the last president comes back in as the next guy, we don't get a chance. So we got 11 months to try to get that funding. So please reach out to those folks. And okay. You got this wired. It's inherent now in me, I think, you know? <laughs> it's like instinctual. Uh, any other comments? Yep. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll move on then to item 5.1. That's our draft economic development strategic plan. Crystal, are you putting the or oh, my on up there? For is you. it on here? I should. The file folder should be open for you with the presentation. And can you also note in the record that Council Member Alvarez is present at this you. time? Thank you. Noted. Good morning, sir. Eddie's presence was here before he was here. <laughs> He's physically now. He's ever present. Ever, 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 omnipresent. Yeah, present Eddie. Ever. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why they call you a gift. Because you're always present. Always present. That's right. There we go. Must be, must be present to <laughs> And that's why you know it's presente. So, presente. Presente, solamente. Totalmente. And uh, just change it to the www. Your website. Oh, yeah. this one's Danny's. Danny's. Oh, we can use it. Okay. Oh, Jim's. Yeah. We're <laughs> <We're> sending <laughs> it to our moment. Let it know. <laughs> That's good. That's good though. Yeah. Yeah. You did a good job. Okay. No, we're back. All right, we're on business now. That's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good. Um, so today I wanted to start going over um, the actual implementation piece to the strategic plan. So I know you've all been through multiple meetings, uh, many meetings and city council meetings um, on the full strategic plan. Um, but for the last several weeks, we've been working on paring down and focusing on the actual implementation. And so we put together um, kind of a draft of how we see the first few years of the implementation going. And we'd love to get comments from you on if that we're going in the right direction, if this is what you were um, of what you were thinking. So I'm going to start with kind of the key areas of implementation. So the key areas that we see, um, and again, focusing down on the plan um, for these areas and also thinking about the staff that we have in economic development, which is two people and has always been, um, and the amount of work that needs to be done as I go through this to prepare us to start for these, to get ready for these attraction plans. So the first one is Investment Santa Rosa Attraction Program, and this is the large business, would be a large business attraction. Entrepreneurship and small business support, um, expansion of economic vibrancy. That's um, in that plan uh, for the first portion of it, for the implementation. We're talking about the downtown asset strategy, which is the surplus uh, pieces that we already have in process, and expanding on that program, as well as the reimagination of any vacant sites or dead zones that we have first in the downtown and then moving out to uh, parks um, and looking at those. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. Why isn't this going the other way? <laughs> I'm trying to use this. Okay, so the next one, um, and then the online platform, uh, community investment programs we're gonna continue with, obviously. We already have those in place with all the ARPA support programs. And then um, 
the child care support program, of course, keeping that going um, and in line. And then the online platform implementations, which um, we need to do quite a bit of work on. Um, and I'll go through those a little bit. So first of all, online platforms. Um, as we see it, we need to create one business-friendly city brand over, over the years, over many, many, many years, 20 plus years. Um, there have been different forms of city brands for a tr business attraction. Um, I think I've found five or six so far um, over a long period of time. And so we feel the need to work on um, with the community as well and with the council on one specific brand that's city focused for the city of Santa Rosa on business attraction. Um, that's kind of our starting platform. Then we need to create an online information services and toolkit center. So. The one-stop shop, we've talked about this for so many years in council, we would love to have a physical one-stop shop where everybody can come in, they can get all of their needs met in one area and not have to go from room to room or different places. Unfortunately, in the building that we're in right now, we can't, we've looked at many times creating a one-stop shop and we haven't been able to do that in our current existing facility. So I see that as a little bit of a longer term goal as we look at uh, a new building for City Hall potentially in our future, which I'll talk about a little um, a little bit more in the in the coming slides. But for now, um, we think the the way to go is to create a really really fabulous virtual one stop shop, so everybody can go there. They can get all the information they need, what they need to do, create videos to do that, make it very user friendly, um, and that's going to take some time. So this is all preparation for all of that attraction that we want to do, that business attraction. We need a few software programs, which um, Gabe and I are already down the, on the road with looking at two specific ones. We need something for demographics, um, it's consistent demographics. We need something for land availability, which we have some, but we are looking at specific programs for that. You'll hear, you'll hear me talk about um, prepare, preparation of land for business attraction a lot. And then we need some tracking software. And so we, um, we've we identified some uh, software that we're looking at now and having um, IT review. And then we need to implement some online dashboards for tracking and performance. So we need to be able to report out to the community and to the council and just to our exec team um, what's happening. So like those ARPA fund dollars. I'm sure you all want to be able to just go somewhere and see, hey, this is who got the money. This is where it is. This is how much we've expended so far. So we're going to try and create some of those dashboards to make it really easy for you to see the metrics of where your dollars are going and where you've chosen to program the dollars. And then we're trying to put um, metrics to each section. So clear metrics so we can look at the programs as we're going through this and over the next five years and after the first year, after the second year, after the third year, really look at it and see what have we done good? Look at our metrics. What have we not done good? What are our percentages for business licenses, for whatever these metrics are? And adjust the program as needed and be able to report out to the community and to council how we are, what we've done, and how well we're doing. The big one um, for this is the investment SR attraction strategy. This is large business attraction, which we all know that the city, um, you know, fiscal responsibility and, and fiscal improvement is a very high priority for the city. And this is a, this is a big thing for bringing in um, that fiscal and economic growth um, that the city desperately needs. So we need to build um, a whole program around business attraction. Again, going back to you know, we need to do all the homework to have to be prepared to attract those businesses. So we can't just go out and start using our playbook to bring business in when we're not prepared yet completely. So this is all the internal preparation until we get our playbook in order and start engaging it. And so there's a timeline and metrics um, that we've prepared for that process. Um, I'm not going to go through every single one of these. I'm happy to answer, answer questions on it. But the big one I did want to address is land development. We are not prepared as a city yet for for land development, in my opinion, for not not city owned land, but um, out, you know privately owned land. So Gabe and I have been working on, and the whole team really on trying to identify the land development. We're working with Ashley and with Jessica as the planning team to make sure that 
we can be nimble in, in our general plan because that's our biggest plan up here, right? And our specific plan, make sure we have what we need in there to be able to be nimble to change some of the uses on the land to be able to bring those businesses in. Because if we can't do the, the land use easily, um, that's you know a hurdle for bringing business in and what they're looking at. So there's a, a quite a bit of, of background work that needs to be done on that. Um, we need to identify key expansion areas. Um, I'd like to do a business and we can do that in-house, a business gap analysis to see where we are. We need to look at if we already have clusters, if we already have um, agglomerations formed and can we build on those? Um, what do we have now? What are our top ones? How are those businesses doing? We need to know what the major operating expenses for those businesses are. So we need, we've need we already started to make appointments to work with the businesses to find out what are their operating expenses? How can we help with that? How can we um, how can we make that better or put an attraction plan together to make that better so that we're trying to you know inquire new businesses to come forward we're prepared with all that information um, and then here are some of the targets that we're trying to look at the first year um, it's mostly just assessments of the playbook so we'd like to get that information compiled share it with council make sure we're going in the subcommittee make sure we're going in the right direction identify those target businesses know where we already have um, those clusters those automations where we need to build where 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 our um our holes are what do we need and then start and hopefully begin the outreach in the first year um it's an it's an aggressive plan um but we're hoping that <clears throat> we can get to that point in year three eval is a little more a little closer to the metric. So do we have the increase in land readiness in year three? H how much progress have we made in our outreach to businesses? And are the negotiations with business in process? Have we reached those points? Are we making headway? Um, and then year five, which is the end of this plan is really stringent. So what's the percent change in the number <laughs> of business licenses? Have we increased our business licenses? Um, what's the increase in job creation? Um, expected tax increase and a full evaluation of the program and if it's working and where we need to go. And then if we're doing well and the areas we're doing well, we need to believe we, we need to work on implementation of, to sustain the long-term growth, not just short-term. And so then we're on to entrepreneurship and small business support. Um, this is really growing and helping out supporting um, the ecosystem of small business in Santa Rosa, and that's all over Santa Rosa. So building connections, creating partnerships, um, also looking for places where we can build workforce development in the small business, or we can get students in for mentoring or students in for working to learn one, build the workforce and one, uh, teach them how to build their own business. We plan to connect with um, the state EDB um, has, is building a huge website right now um, that Rafael and I have been looking at that really has a lot of support for small business. It's helped with building a business plan, um, helps with everything that they need, connecting the correct people and getting that information out with websites um, to know what they're doing. And then you know, social media support from the city, help with funding sources from the state and the county for their capital stack to be able to start um, a business. And then really looking at um, immigrants, BIPOC and women owned entrepreneurs, what are the hurdles? How can we help close that gap with the hurdles? And then again, the evaluation metrics. This one, because we do have a little bit more in place for solid business support. Year three, I'm really looking at the percent change in business licenses, the percent change in startups, a little higher metrics. How are we doing? Where are we? Because we're we do have a little bit of a program in place now. And then economic um, expansion of economic vibrancy. This is you guys have heard a lot about it at council. Um, again, this doesn't touch on everything in the economic development plan. Um, we're hoping that we can start with these basics, build on these, and then start adding in the things that we really want to do as time is going on and as we're successful with our basic approaches. Um, so continuation of the downtown asset strategy. So we need to complete the development agreements with the two um, developers that we have on the two surplus parcels that we've started, identify grant more grant funding, expand programs to address additional underutilized city property if there is some and what are those active uses those alternative uses start with the downtown and then move to the outer areas 
Um, Reimagining empty or dead spaces is kind of a big one. Um, we hope in the years to come as we're more fiscally uh, able to, that we can set up a uh, economic development or um, real estate fund to be able to look at those dead zones and do feasibilities in certain areas that we all agree need to be done. Um, and then the last one, which has kind of been our, our long-term goal and want to keep on there is to continue to assess city hall complex opportunities and where we can go thinking about that one-stop shop and thinking about a potential future redevelopment of a city hall site. And then um, again, measurements for each of those. Where are we with the DDAs in year one? Um, where are we with any potential identification of potential business opportunities to reimagine all those spaces that we have, especially in business parks and some in downtown to really boost the vibrancy and get people um, you know, in and around our town? Um, year three is um, hopefully thinking about a feasibility fund to look at those dead spaces and how we can program that fund for certain areas. Um, pre, we're hoping pre-construction will be started on our two surplus sites by that time. And then looking at the percent of empty storefronts. So we do have to come up with that percentage, which the um, software package that I was talking about earlier that Gabe and I have been working on will help us with those um, with those numbers now to get a starting point and then to know what our ending point is. And then um, again, community investment um, programs. We're going to continue all of the ARPA funded programs. Um, we're in the process of just um, giving out grant, uh, expanding the grants uh, for the first, I think, seven, five, seven facade facade improvement grants, the parklet grants, and the placemaking grants. The child uh, support program is still continuing and in place. Um, we'll put some metrics in place for both of those and dashboards in place <coughs> for facade, parklet, and placemaking so you can see where your money is being spent, how it's being spent, and um, you know what, are the, what have we gotten from this? What has is, what is the community gotten from this? Um, and then identify outside um, funding sources to try and continue some of these programs. So we know fiscally, you know, we have the ARPA money, which was fabulous. We don't really have the ARPA money. And once it's expended, is there an outside funding source or grant to help continue with some of these programs? And then again, as I said, build on those dashboards so that everyone can see where we are, what we've done. Um, and that's really it for... Um, for what we're thinking about for the um, beginning stages of putting together the program. And as I said, Raphael and, have a, um, Raphael and I and Gabe and our whole team have um, a heavy lift to prepare all of this information and get those implementation packages ready, um, get the, you know, all of our online networking ready and then looking um, for support from the whole city to actually do the implementation of the, of the attraction program. So we'd love to hear what your thoughts um, are if we're missing something that's really important to start with. Um, that's it. All right, you wanna start? Thank you, sir. Uh, for myself, I think it's more common than anything that, that I wanna make on, on this topic. Uh, one of the things that I've heard is, is create an, an an environment where the entrepreneur uh, with the overhead costs and how they approach overhead costs, you know, and we're seeing and we're hearing about in the paper that we're we're seeing all these businesses leave our our, our malls, and from a business aspect of it, it's not so much what the what the overhead costs <laughs> are, but it's more of the potential of of, of revenue. Uh, after all, if you're charging me a thousand dollars, but I'm making a million, a thousand doesn't doesn't sound that big, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm only making eight hundred, you're charging me a thousand. That seems to be a problem. Uh, so for me, it's more of what are we? Is this, and I'm speaking from the business owner's uh, perspective that I'm offering here. What are we as a city of Santa Rosa doing to attract customers to our downtown corridor? As we all understand, that the downtown corridor is the juggler of all shopping centers of San Rosa. So I really hope that that maintains to be the focus. And it sounds like it is. And one thing that I, that I believe I had a conversation with uh, Gabe on uh, in city chambers is what are we doing to approach the business owners themselves? And I believe that's, and it was a great response from you, Gabe, that that is definitely being implemented into the strategy moving forward. And I hope that it continues to be the strategy moving forward. 
Um, so I, I'm great with all the high level stuff. I mean, I just have some some more minor things. Um, in terms of uh, when we're assessing, and I don't know if you can do this or not, but I, I'm just going to throw it out there. In terms of assessing um, the future of, of the complex, of the city hall complex, I prefer prioritization of redevelopment over relocation, just because I don't want to get to another point in 15 years where we are now, where we move to another place and then there's deferred maintenance and we're going like that. I think if we, I'd like to look at redevelopment. I don't know if that's getting some sort of windfall or, or an exclusive negotiating agreement or whatever it is, but I prefer that just to be able to start anew um, than, than delaying where we are by another 10 to 15 years and putting preferably not us as electeds in that position again, but some other future electeds in that position. Um, one thing I did want to see, and, and it just kind of came to mind was, um, <clears throat> is, is downtown connectivity find, um, maybe it's sort of a bridge. Cause I know, I know most of us are like, look at the mall and like, Hey, if there's some way we could redevelop the mall and get, maybe open it up, get a pathway between. Um, so it may not be a long-term goal, but more of a bridge from now until whenever that may or may not happen, but find a way to make connectivity between railroad square and, and, and courthouse square a lot easier and a lot more attractive. I've heard ideas thrown out there from everything from, um, Chris and I's favorite, uh, electric, car remote electric car that we we saw to trolleys to whatever right horse-drawn carriages i don't know but something that can get people from here to there easier than having to go under an underpass or or through a parking for lot. the official record it was an autonomous electric vehicle that <laughs> acted as almost like a street car uh in in san francisco but would go around your downtown and pick people up and drop people off and for the record, our city manager said it was not feasible at this time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how cool it was. Um, <laughs> but I, I'd like to see something like that um, just as a, as a bridge for right now. I think both, I, I hate the bifurcation of Railroad Square and, 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 and yeah. Courthouse Square, but I think if, if we have to say it, both sides would be uh, 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 happy with something like that, moving patrons from one side to the other um, with ease. Uh, anything else? No, it's... So one of the things that I really appreciate in the, the plan was the activation of, uh, you called it, I think, dead space. Um, but I, I'm even thinking own space that has future plans potentially slated for it, but isn't there yet. Uh, like, so for exam example, along our square, there's some spaces there that might be able to host a pop-up park uh, that could bring parents and kids down to downtown uh, to Eddie's point, help drive uh, additional revenue or uh, generation for our businesses. So I really like that and like to see that sort of explored a little bit more what opportunities that there are there. Um, an understanding uh, as, as I'm looking at the attorney, yes, liability, I get it. And but, <laughs> but we can come up with a, a program or a plan. Um, uh, talk to me a little bit about how we're going to approach emerging markets or emerging opportunities. Uh, are you envisioning bringing in consultants to help us with that? Are you thinking that we'll do that in, internally? Uh, how do you see that playing out? You want to go or you want to go? Uh, I'll go first and then feel free to add, Jill. Uh, I think that that's an excellent point. When, when we have a very small but mighty economic development team, it becomes an issue of the amount of hours in the day. Um, I think when we get into our smaller community and creating those relationships, it's really important to not have a consultant involved in that. The, those businesses need to understand that I'm there and Jill are there to handle those issues. The small businesses need to know the same. I think where it gets a little more challenging is when you're trying to find emerging businesses in other areas where you're canvassing those opportunities and understanding, are they going to work in Santa Rosa or not? And that's where you actually do benefit from a consultant-driven exercise because they have their finger more on the pulse of really what's happening regionally. So we're going to have to figure out the balance of that, but I think it's really important for the team to put the face on it. Um, and go out to where people are and get on a bus, a plane, go talk to businesses about Santa Rosa. Do they understand what we're doing? Um, we've put a lot of housing units into the market here. And what comes next from those housing units? Is it more of a movement of goods? Is it more of the business falls behind that? We have to understand what those trends look like. And that needs to be the core group. Um, and then that's supplemented by, I think, special studies to understand more of those regional things that are happening throughout the nation and the state. So later today, we're going to start discussing next year's budget. Uh, is this something that we need to flag in that discussion? Because by June, by budget adoption, will we 
feel like we're in a place with this plan to where we can start to fund different aspects of the plan that we want to see roll out in year one. So I think where we are at this point, we have some initial funding for the plan and the implementation strategies on the plan. And right now in year one, it's more or less going to be a focus on building the infrastructure and the foundation of that. Um, we'll pull together the pieces. We'll have a better understanding as we get through year one on what the actual internal resource needs are and what the external resource needs are. So I think as we go through it, um, we'll, we'll know a little more as we get into this fiscal year discussion, but they're happening rapidly. Um, we'll more likely be looking at a next fiscal year sort of conversation to truly understand what sort of resources we need because we do have budget that we're working in in that beginning stage. And I think the importance of having Jill and I and the rest of the core team understanding it is a two person team, but it has a village behind it. Right. And when we start talking about a one stop shop, we talk, start talking about other resources in the city, it becomes sort of a coordination effort. And as we understand what that coordination looks like, then we can start identifying the resource needs in the various areas. But it is going to take a little time to, to uncover all of that. Okay. And then I know a couple of years ago, EDB did a uh, analysis for one of the things that they said was a huge opportunity uh, for Sonoma County in large was investment in women owned in BIPOC uh, businesses, that that was seen as the biggest opportunity for growth economically. It also dovetails very well with our equity goals in the city. Uh, how do you envision that playing out in this plan? And how do we craft some of this specifically to help uh, women and minority owned businesses? Yeah, we've got to we've got to reach out and we've got to do some surveying and we've got to get some connections in place. We need to find out what the hurdles are. I mentioned it um, earlier, and then we need to start addressing with the county and the state how we can meet those hurdles. So we can't do it alone as a city. We don't have all the funding that we need to do it, but we can with our partners. And so that's a, a huge priority um, on our part of moving forward. Yeah, I think one of the things that I hear over and over again from business owners, especially small business owners, is they're so focused on their business that sometimes it's hard for them to be involved in these discussions or to even go and really figure out what resources are available to them. And so making sure that we're crafting this in a way where we're also being really proactive in reaching out to talk to folks about what's available, but then also being flexible enough to say, what do you as an individual need with your business? Yeah, and there's a lot of resources available, I think, that a lot of people are not aware of. Mm -hmm. um, there's some newer ones, too, especially. So we've been trying to gather that together. Um, and not only um, I spoke to the library yesterday about getting some help from them on this. Um, I think a lot of our outside partners can help help us um, to reach out to those people and to get them the information that they need and the help they need, especially on business plans. That seems to be what I keep hearing even in my real estate job, what I'm hearing over and over again is the business plan issue. And there is help for that. Mm -hmm. um, so really just connecting, connecting the dots is going to be really important for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interim deputy director of economic development. All right. Acting. 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 Okay. Sorry. Um, there are legal implications. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that leads me to dovetail kind of off of Chris's question about resources. And as we start the plan, uh, the budget planning process, um, this is the altogether fourth meeting. I think this has come before either the subcommittee or council. And the last thing I want is for this to, to be put on a shelf and gather dust because we don't have the internal resources. So for me, um, and this may be an assistant city manager and a CFO question is, um, I think going into the budget process about how we implement this, knowing what the economic development department looks like um, is gonna help me understand budgetarily what kind of resources we're gonna to put towards it. Um, I love our team. I love the small but mighty attitude. I prefer not to be small but mighty. I, I prefer to be a little bit more robust than that. Um, if we're gonna take on something at this level with um, um, in terms of, of compli uh, how complicated it is as well as how important it is to our uh, our community and i mean we the, the first discussion we had was economic development touches everything from child care to housing right so um this is a hugely important document and plan that we're putting together so if we're gonna put resources towards it financially i need to know what kind of resources we're gonna put towards it um in terms of of person power yeah, and, and I know we haven't been quiet about, uh, I know we've got a structural deficit with the city, but we also have 
one-time funds that are still sitting there that we see this, I see this as a council member as an investment uh, that should grow the whole pot. Uh, and I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable if we need to use some of those one-time funds that are sitting there above our reserve policy to focus on economic development. I think it'll pay dividends for us long-term. Yeah, please. Excuse me for being repetitive as what, what I'm about to speak is, is both what I've heard from my fellow colleagues as well as from staff. Uh, it, and it has to do with the one-stop shop and how important that is and how vital that is, especially for if we're talking about women-owned or BIPOC community-owned. It, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's a level of education and understanding from those that might not, not, not know how to fill out that form. And for, for Rafael, you've seen it in, 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 in Roseland prior to the annexation of, of, of Roseland and South Park, how important, how vital you were to, the, to really the growth of, of Roseland specifically. Uh, so for me, it's really not who's in the room, but who definitely needs that, so that assistance moving forward. Uh, and, and taking account that it is an uh, opportunity zone, you know, again, being repetitive, the, the efforts that we're putting forward to, to providing those resources information to that type of community and how important it is for, for us to be able to be effective in those efforts as well. I uh, also heard my colleagues support an autonomous uh, trolley system. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> why, why can't it go just a little bit more southwest and then come I mean, right back? Right? <laughs> or just electric overall. <laughs> right, right. Uh, all right, let's go to a public comment then on this item if there's nothing else from staff. Yep. Dwayne DeWitt from Roseland. You gotta move faster, gig. You can you, you got next. <laughs> Emeryville has a thing called the Emery Go Round. Okay. <laughs> and it's been operating very successfully for decades. So there's things that you can do like that. Specifically regarding the downtown area, almost 14, 15 years ago, maybe longer, someone proposed Sunday streets where you closed off 4th Street as you do during the Thursday or Wednesday market and that you do that on Sundays and allow people to have walking streets. Decades ago, there was a downtown task force. I think it's about 30 years ago almost and they put a report together. I started coming here and I listened to downtown business people put the kibosh on these types of things that you're now talking about. So I would ask for you to lead the business people in a way to the promised land. Let them see that these economic development measures that Raphael and others are talking about in Roseland are actually gonna be helpful in the greater picture. Then there's a woman by the name, uh, I forget, I don't want to misquote her name. La Texanita is the name of the restaurant on Sebastopol Road, um, owned by a nice woman. Alba Mendes. All right, Alba Mendes. So the thing of it is, is she and another young woman who's on the Roseland School Board could be the leaders of this Roseland economic development effort, whatever you decide to name it. And then they have already been talking with me for decades, at least. And you have... Um, Mr. Navarro at the Sazan restaurant out of Peru. There's a lot of people from a lot of different countries over in Rosalind, and they're working together. What we need to show them is that the city is going to be supportive of the efforts they'd like to take, and that it's not a top-down type thing. So perhaps you could have a forum that wouldn't cost money. This happened in the past with Mr. Alvarez bringing some of those business owners when they had El Market Mercadito that was happening before it was destroyed. These are the dilemmas we face because we get an initiative going and then it breaks down. So if you could now start this initiative with your strong crew, Rafael, Scott, and Ed, to go out there and entice these women-owned businesses to let them put together a woman-led economic development business group out there. And then there's a lot of people from um, Somalia, Eritrea, and Wong from uh, Southeast Asia and Vietnamese. We can get those folks involved when they see that you're welcoming to them. They're already doing things, but they put their money into their own ethnic groups financing programs, which they have. So if we can show them to come to the city and work together with you folks on what you want to do, and I'll be putting the good word into the Roseland review that Mr. Alvarez and Mr. Rivero are reaching out to the uh, Hispanic community and seeking some volunteers. 
and I'll make sure everybody knows there's no money involved. There never has been money for Roseland, <laughs> will be, but we can make it happen with, what's that called? Social capital. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, Gig Hideout, resident, homeowner of Burbank Gardens neighborhood. I own two businesses and also part-time city staff. I'm not working today. So um, I wanted to address the issues of evaluation and the criteria that you have throughout there. <clears throat> I've been a professional evaluator and questionnaire designer and all that. I'm not pitching myself right now, but um, I noticed some of the I looked through the whole thing and it's everywhere, which is perfect. And some of them are look pretty specific, which is good. And most of them are very generic and not defined yet, which is because you're not there yet. But what I wanted to say was that um, in order for any kind of evaluation indicator to be useful after all is said and done, it has to be very specific. And that takes a lot of really thinking. And most of the time people say, okay, we'll, we'll get that at the end and see how many you've done this. But at the end, sometimes you don't really have the detailed kind of question that, well, are they this way or are they that way? So you have to get those indicators in there before you start the implementation. And that takes a lot of thought. And it often takes somebody, an outside consultant or someone who's not already into your mindset to say, well, how do you know that they're actually doing that? Um, so anyway, my, my point is just that um, don't just put off the evaluation and the de definition of the indicators towards the end and think, okay, we'll just add everything up and see how we did. It's got to be designed in the beginning because sometimes you need to get that data when the customer comes in or when you make the contact or whatever it is. And that might only be one question or two questions. Did you do this? Did you do that? Okay, boom, we got that in there. And now you've got data that you can use at that evaluation at the end. So um, I just know that most people think, oh, I'll ask a few questions, we'll find out what's happening and it'll all be good. It's not that easy. And um, it, it really takes um, the thought of breaking it down into the, into like, well, how would we, how would we know that we got new businesses, but did we get the kind we're looking for? Are they really, creating economic development, or are, are they losing? And w should we count that? So it can get, it can, you can get deeper and deeper into it. And the problem is, if you try to collect too much data, then nobody wants to answer any questions and it becomes a problem. So how to focus it into one or two questions that only takes 30 seconds to get that data. And then later on down the line, you present a report that's and not just interesting, but gives you a strategy for, okay, how do we build on what we did well and change what we didn't do so well? So that's my pitch. <laughs> Thanks, Gabe. All right, I'll bring it back. Uh, anything additional from staff? Anything I, have a, I have a comment, if I yeah. may. If I may. Uh, sure. So there is a pilot, uh, I'm in the steering committee for a pilot trolley project and it's uh, in partnership with the DAO. And the plan is to bring a trolley that will circle around Rebel Square and downtown sometime between July and October. Uh, the DAO has identified some funding to fund this trolley. They're also gonna apply for a community promotions uh, grant. Uh, but um, we're getting to the stage where we're gonna find out what the lease cost is and bring the trolley up here eventually uh, with the help of the DAO. So that's what we call responsive staff. Yeah, there we go. Yes. <laughs> um, and one quick comment too regarding the entrepreneurs and such. Um, in addition to business planning, uh, they also they're also very interested in marketing, in learning more about marketing planning, and definitely access to uh, capital, uh, low interest rates. Because said capital would be an ideal organization that uh, it's out there to help a lot of these entrepreneurs, but many others like like Crescer would be ideal as well. One quick thing, um, he left, but I was going to give Dwayne some credit for jog of my mind on uh, on something that I've seen before, and not to get too specific, but uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship and and BIPOC communities, BIPOC communities, immigrant communities, one thing I've seen in like Los Angeles and in, in San Diego is basically um, 
the pooling of resources. So instead of someone from East Africa saying, I would open a restaurant by my own and trying to fund it and everything, they open, this is just an example and you could do it for multiple industries, but um, they basically get a cafeteria. And, and so it's like a retail space and they put five different restaurants in there. So you walk in and there's chairs and tables everywhere and you can go over here, East African food, over here, food from Michoacan, Khan, over here, Indian food. Um, I think that's something that we as the city could help um, entrepreneurs kind of get to because I don't think a lot of entrepreneurs, especially among immigrant communities or marginalized communities, know that those kind of opportunities exist or could be mutually beneficial. Yep. And if I could add to that, um, I know that that effort was definitely made with the mitote, where we, or a tiangue, which would be a word in, in, in old language to say a, a market. And it was definitely uh, beneficial. And we actually saw some of the uh, business owners move on and occupy other spaces within the city of Santa Rosa. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely the, the, the incubator program. Yeah. That, that, that we see being very effective. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to San Diego and San Jose about this this week, actually, um, and they have Good. some great examples. Yeah. yeah. Responsive staff, indeed. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any final words on it? All right, with that, we're adjourned then. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Hang out. Hang out for a second. Uh,